Hello, my name is Terry White, Worldwide Design and Photography Evangelist for Adobe, and it's my pleasure to give you a first look at the new CC Library implementation inside of Dreamweaver CC 2015. That's right, you can now take advantage of the same Creative Cloud libraries that you've been using in Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, Premiere, After Effects, and even the mobile apps. Now, for the first time, you can sync assets using Creative Sync across the board, across all your workflows. And it's implemented beautifully inside of Dreamweaver. So let's take a look at the document I've got open right here. The document that I have open, I can tell right off the bat by looking at these breakpoints, is that this one's already been optimized for a responsive design. So as my, uh, my viewers look at it on smaller and smaller devices and screens, where my uh, design would have broken before, those breakpoints allow me to go in and customize how it will look and what the experience will be like for each viewer, no matter what size display they're on. You'll also notice that I've got the CC Library panel already open right here, and where you get that is from the window menu. There's a brand new option called CC Libraries, and that will let you open up your CC Library panel. Now, if you've never created a library, you have the ability to add one or create one right there on the spot. And of course, if you have multiple libraries, they will appear here as a list, and you can choose which one you want. Now, in this case, I'm working with a library called Passport Site. And I can tell just by the double person icon there that I'm also sharing this library or this library is being shared to me. That's the collaboration feature built into CC libraries. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and scroll down the document a little bit. And I can see that some placeholders have been left for me. I can also see um, where, I, where the design looks pretty good, but I need to add a few elements. Luckily, I am working with a shared library, and in this case, my design team has begun to give me elements to work with. So, for example, the first thing I want to do is, on the left-hand side of this document, I have a uh, new um, card image that needs to go on the left side. So, I'm just going to pick that up using drag and drop right from the CC library. I can go ahead and dictate which div that's going to go into. Now, I should point out that that's a Photoshop native file. And of course, we don't put Photoshop files on the web. So what um, Dreamweaver is asking to do is optimize the file, place it wherever I want it, call it where, whatever I want, and optimize it in any, any um, uh, format that I want. So in this case, we want JPEG. We'll go ahead and click OK. That will optimize it, create a JPEG for me on the fly, and put it in that same folder that I uh, designated. So we'll do the same thing for this image on the right. We'll drag this one in. Uh, once the, the div highlights, I can let go. I get the same option. Again, I can make it whatever format I want. We'll go ahead and put that in, and it will drop that image in, extracting it right here in Dreamweaver and giving us the image we need. So far, so good. This is awesome. Now, you'll also notice that when you click on an image, you have the ability to re-optimize that image just by clicking the Creative Cloud icon. Because this is synced and linked to the Creative Cloud Library. I have the ability to change my optimization feature and it will go in and create a new image based on whatever I change it to. So now I'm making a ping out of that. It will extract and yep, I wanna update it. It will update that image with, or update this page with the new image. All right, so pretty cool to be able to re-optimize that way. Now, so far we've done drag and drop, which is pretty cool, but I know there's some coders probably watching this and you may be interested in some of the new code hinting that we have. So for example, I'm gonna select this div. I'm gonna right click on this special card and go right over to um, this particular item. That will take me to it in the code right now, or I'm now, now in split view. I was looking at it in live view. So while I'm in split view, I can go ahead and type in background image. And as soon as I hit the colon, magic starts to happen. As a matter of fact, the magic that starts to happen is it starts to ask me for an image. Now, wait, what image should I get? So let, hold on, let's back off the colon for a minute. Um, what's gonna go in this spot is something for the Santa Monica State Beach. I realize I don't have the right image yet. So right here in mid workflow, I can head over to my CC library where Adobe Stock has also been implemented. If the team hadn't provided me with an image, no problem, I can just search for Santa Monica State Beach, 
and it will start to go through the over 40 million images on Adobe Stock, finding the images that are tagged that way. So if I see an image that I like, there's one that I've already uh, used, but let's see if we have a different one that I kind of like better. Ooh, I like that uh, end of trail. I like the Santa Monica signpost. I like the night shot of this as well. Oh, so many choices, so little time. Uh, I like the beach shot. And as a matter of fact, if this is one that I like, I can go ahead and download a preview of that right off the bat without having to pay for it or license it at this point. So right now that's a preview I can use showing my uh, web designs. If my client approves it, then I can uh, go right back to the library panel, right click on it and license that image right here and have it update not only this site, not only this page, but everywhere I've used that image. So that's the beauty of working with stock Adobe Stock inside of Adobe Dreamweaver using the CC libraries. So let's go back to where we were in the code. We'll go ahead and put that colon in now. And you'll notice that um, I, it takes me right to the Passport Site library that I was in. So if I hit my down arrow, I can begin to see the images, even in a preview. If I don't remember what they're called, I certainly don't remember what that stock image is called. There's one, but that's not the one I'm looking for. Uh, if I know the name, I can simply just scroll to it, but I like being able to view these and preview these right here on the fly. There's the one I'm looking for, so I just simply hit enter. Again, it's going to optimize it for me. I can go ahead and click OK, and that will put that in, and we can go back to live view. There we go. That'll put that in right as a background image. And of course, it's got the Adobe Stock watermark, because we're just using a low res preview for now. Once we license it, we can update it in the panel and it will update it in the site as well. So one more thing here, let's go ahead and put the text in for this while we're here. And we'll go ahead and type that in, Santa Monica State Beach. So now that matches what our image is. So we can go ahead and scroll down and keep going. Now in this case, I've got some, uh, I've got three uh, columns here where I want to put in uh, a couple placeholder images or a couple images that I want to use. One's the story card. So let's go ahead and drop that one in. And again, it's asking me where I want to put it right there. And I can also optimize the size for it right here. So I'm going to say 200 pixels and we're going to square it up here. We're going to make it 200 by 200. And as soon as I optimize that as a JPEG, it drops it right in. And again, whether that's a <clears throat> library asset that's provided by my team or a stock image, I can use it right here on the fly. So we have a bucket list as well that we want to uh, go ahead and tap into. So I have a bucket li list image that is from Adobe Stock. We'll go ahead and drag that one in as well. And same thing, we're going to make that 200 by 200 so it matches the other size. We'll click OK. And yep, I want to replace the one that I'd used earlier. There, it just drops that one in. And last but not least, we've got this adventure image. We're going to have some fun with this one. So let's go ahead and drop this adventure one in. And we'll give it the same treatment that we gave the other ones. We'll make it 200 by 200. Perhaps slightly stretching it, but that's okay in these cases. And again, we can optimize it in any format we want. And if it exists, we'll go ahead and replace it. Great, now that we've got that image in place, what I'd love to do is see how it would look as a black and white. Now keep in mind, that's linked from my CC library. If I head over to Photoshop, in Photoshop, I've got that same asset. And if I double click on it in the library panel, it brings it up complete with all of its layers. So I have a layer that's set for hue and saturation. I can go ahead and turn that layer on, which makes this image a black and white save it, I don't even have to leave Photoshop or leave uh, this image, I can just uh, leave it open, I don't have to close it. And if I head back to Dreamweaver, well that updates in the library, but let's go ahead now and re-optimize it here in Dreamweaver on the layout. So we just click our Creative Cloud icon one more time, uh, we just click OK unless we want to change the format, and what that will do is extract a new asset to replace and put back in uh, to that same exact spot. So it takes a second to update, and there it is. 
So the ability to have linked assets that take advantage of creative sync between applications is awesome. All right, so let's do a couple more things here. Let's scroll down. Now, so far we've had a pretty much a pixel based workflow. What if we had something that's vector based? So let me select this div over here. Actually, we'll select this one. And now, uh, in this case, I've got a car icon. And this one is actually, as you see as I hover over it, an Adobe Illustrator file. So if I drag over this Illustrator file, I can again put it wherever I want. We'll put it there. And you notice I get the additional option of SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics. It recognizes that that's an Illustrator file. It gives me the SVG option. I can go ahead and just simply click OK. And it's going to put it in full full size at this point, which is OK. I will re-optimize it in just a moment here. We're going to click on it. And we're just going to simply scale it down. So now we can go ahead and we can make this. We're going to make this a little smaller. We'll make it 100 by 100. And there it is. So now we've got that scalable vector graphic image in place, ready to go. Now, so far, we've been working with images. What enhancements can we do to our text? Well, let's go ahead and scroll up and let's start here with the El Matador State Beach. I'm going to select that object and I can see that it's using the H2 tag. And if I go over to my CSS designer, I can see that in my CSS designer that it's this particular color, whatever color that is. Now, in your CC library, it's not just about images. You can have all kinds of things in a library. You can have brushes for Photoshop. Or, or Illustrator. You can have um, character styles for InDesign. You can also have, and Photoshop and Illustrator, you can also have colors. And these colors are here and they're pretty cool and I can use them to replace my H2 tag with whatever color I want. But what if I want to grab a color from something in my environment, something around me? So for example, I've got my iPhone 6S Plus here and whether you're on iPhone or Android, there's a cool app you can download for free. It's called Adobe Capture CC. So if I fire up Capture CC, it, I'm on the same uh, library at the very top there. It says Passport Site. I can, of course, switch to whatever library I want. And this app allows me to capture colors, shapes, brushes, and looks for video. Since I'm on colors, I'm just going to tap the plus sign, which will activate the device camera. And I've got this great floral arrangement right here on my desk. And if, I, if there's a color I want, I can go ahead and just tap and move and drag around inside the, uh, inside the moving or live picture here. And of course, I can pick up whatever colors in this that I want, whatever shades I want, even something there over on the monitor, I can get that color too. So once I have these colors, we'll go ahead and just uh, click the capture button. And I can name this theme whatever I want. So we'll call it Fall Colors. Even though I'm on the swipe keyboard there, but we'll go ahead and name it Fall Colors. And then we'll save the color theme. Now that color theme is syncing up to Creative Cloud and to everywhere I'm signed into Creative Cloud on my mobile apps and on my desktop. And if I scroll down, it's already here. It just synced that fast in the time it took me to explain it. The fall colors theme is right here in my desktop. It's in Photoshop. It's in Illustrator. It's in InDesign. It's in Premiere. It's in After Effects. All these colors are the same colors because they're in the same library that's working across my Creative Cloud applications. So if there's a color I like, I kind of like that darker green. I can right click on it and say copy hex. When I go up to the hex value here, I can just simply paste that in. And that will update all of my H2 tags wherever this CSS is being used. So it'll take a second, and there it is. There's my new color right there on the document. So as you can see, Dreamweaver CC just keeps getting better with each update. And more importantly, the implementation of CC libraries opens up a whole new world for collaboration, workflows that involve multiple assets that are being used throughout the entire uh, design the entire um, uh, theme that you're doing for the entire company or your client. So in this case, CC Libraries rocks, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.